Do you guys remember the innovative startup out of New Zealand using their Seabay printer to automate the construction of concrete structures without formwork? In the past, we've had their CEO, Wafe Suelim, on the Automate Construction podcast. And now we're going to take a look at a couple updates and what they've been working on since then. I'm also really excited to announce we just reached five graduates of the How to 3D Print a House course available in the description on my website. With the successful reaching of this milestone, I've updated the course to include quizzes at relevant sections. Here's a look at a recent small footprint home structure done by Corox. Check out the finish on their printed wall. It's kind of a stamped concrete. I think it actually looks phenomenal. They've also demonstrated their ability to finish a similar wall so that it looks much more traditional. You'll see in a minute the layers on this house look pretty terrific. This is common in the sea bay prints and is especially helped by the fact that this building was done inside. Outdoors you're subject to more elements so it can be a little bit more challenging to achieve such a high quality finish but I have seen Korox do high quality prints outside in the past. Let's take a closer look at their print process. Some of you may remember I actually took the basic operator training on a Seabay printer when I was visiting with them in the Netherlands. This made a huge difference in my ability to understand and critically analyze different processes against each other. Check out the long extruder head they're using. It doesn't have a large hopper near the extruder like some of the other models that we've seen. This extruder does seem to be a little bit different than the one I was using for my test, but overall the material looks very similar. Most of the unique chemical properties are in the dry mix. In fact, there's so much accelerant in the dry mix that they actually need to use a retarder additive in order to prevent the concrete from clogging in the hose. When it comes down to it, after about three layers, the material is already noticeably more solid than it was when it was initially deposited, and after five layers, it's completely hard to the touch. Although with little elbow grease, it can still be smoothed out. Now that we've printed maybe 10 centimeters high, you can start to see a unique pattern emerging. This pattern, as you can see in each layer, has tons of unique angles and curvatures that are not found in other objects. Traditionally, in order to make this shape come to life, you would have to hand make the formwork that you could then pour concrete into. And if you have complicated shapes like these diamonds emerging on the exterior, this becomes very challenging. Printed concrete technologies are making unique one-off designs easier than ever to bring to life. We're achieving a faster build with less resources and we're having less waste overall because the robot tends to do a lot less mistakes than humans. A traditional house will take around nine months to build and we be able to print the house in 10 days. When I went to the Netherlands and watched the guys from Sibi print a wall that three meters high by two meters in 45 minutes and I was just, my jaw just literally dropped to the ground and say, okay, this is the future of the construction industry. And I looked at that and said, I need to order my robot now. Like many of you, the CEO of Korox, Wafe, clearly shares an enthusiasm for what this technology is capable of. And in New Zealand, he's the champion of bringing it to the people. Check out this printed home design they hope to build in the future. It's pretty incredible, and although it's just a rendering, it's certainly unlike anything I've seen before. Now, back to the print. Many companies use materials that aren't capable of printing this height all at once. I've actually watched Seabay printers able to print over 3 meters in one go. Keep in mind that New Zealand is an earthquake zone, so in order to have successful projects, they'll need to mitigate the risks of an earthquake in their printed home by having many expansion joints and avoiding monolithic structures longer than 6 or 8 feet. Right after the concrete is deposited, for this material the chemical reaction begins occurring and this warms the concrete up. The increased heat absorbs a ton of moisture and so in order to make the concrete cure in the healthiest way possible and avoid the risk of cracking, you can spray the concrete down with a hose. It's hard enough that if you spray below the top five layers you won't be doing any damage to the concrete 
and this both cools and hydrates the material. Remember, because this material uses aggregates all below 2 millimeters in size, it technically classifies as a mortar and not a concrete. There's really no limit to the variety of designs which can be achieved through the combination of parametric design and autonomous robotic deposition of printed concrete. Here's the small footprint tiny home we took a look at earlier while it was under development. The pink lumber is pink because it's pressure treated, but it won't look like that in its final form. You can see they had to stick build the roof as with most projects because you can't print concrete horizontally. They demonstrate the inclusion of floor to ceiling windows and also more old fashioned smaller windows utilizing traditional siding to cover the gap above and below the window. Notice, unlike some of the other homes we've seen that are monolithic structures, this home features concrete elements that are not directly connected and have no cold joints so that the home can be rated for earthquake zones. In a region with much more snow, you probably would want to avoid having a flat roof, but in New Zealand that's not an issue. The texture of the walls adds a really interesting dynamic to the home. It changes ever so slightly in color and the texture is not perfectly consistent which gives it a very human and pleasing quality. I know I say this a lot but parametric design really has so much more to offer that we haven't yet seen. People are still learning how to maximize the utility offered by these design softwares and the technology you can use to bring it to life is improving every single day. This demo unit may be tiny but it has big variety in what it demonstrates that this technology can be capable of. I think at the end of the day that's really what Corox was trying to achieve. Here's how they joined the roof structure to the top of the wall. You may notice these walls don't feature many switches or outlets inside of them and this makes the print process a little bit easier allowing people to stay completely outside the buildable volume. Instead, for this home, they integrate most of the electrical systems into the roof, which is stick-built. Remember, you also have the gaps between the printed elements and above and below windows that aren't floor-to-ceiling height that serve as great locations to integrate MEP equipment without having to sacrifice the integrity of the printed wall. Although, if you did want to put that equipment in the printed wall, that would be easy too. The finishing process is as manual a task as you make it. You can leave the layers bare. This is the method I personally prefer, but I do understand that everybody has difference in preference, so you may want to smooth out the layers. At the moment, this requires manual intervention, but I do think it's one of the things these companies are all trying to figure out how best to automate in order to remain competitive as everybody continues to improve over time. I really want to thank Wafe for sharing all of this footage with me so that I could do this video featuring his company. It's not always possible for me to travel to every site around the world and so I love being able to feature projects I wasn't able to visit in person. It's my impossible goal to feature every autonomous robotic construction company equally on this channel. Though I know true fairness will probably never be achieved, I'm trying the best I can. If there's a company you'd like to see I haven't featured yet, make sure to let me know. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and check out Korox at the link to their website in the description.